Hey there, welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Accidents involving oil tankers or drilling rigs can cause huge oil spills and make international news. But they're not the only source of oil contamination in the world's oceans. A 2005 study estimated that there are more than 8,500 shipwrecks in the world's oceans, containing up to 22 billion liters of oil. Many of these vessels were sunk during World War II and have been corroding for over 75 years. It is only a matter of time until their tanks are breached and their oil released into the ocean. According to a 2013 report released by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there are at least 87 sunken ships in U.S. waters that pose a serious environmental concern due to the oil leaks. These ships, which sunk at various points over the past century, still house millions of gallons of oil, held in corroding tanks at risk of failure. Some of these sunken ships, like the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor, are already leaking oil. Others, like the Jacob Luckenbach, have leaked oil sporadically over the years despite attempts to extract the oil and patch holes in the ship. When leaks are detected or suspected, efforts may be made to recover the oil before it can spread. However, the cost of removing oil from a shipwreck may be prohibitive, and the process can take weeks or months. It is often challenging for divers to reach ships at depths below 66 meters without using cost-intensive methods. There are different types of oil spills and also different types of cleaning methods. Cleaning methods depend on factors such as the time of the spill, type of oil, weather conditions, and location. It's important to note that even without human intervention, oil spills will eventually break down naturally due to sun, weather, and wave actions. But this process takes a very long time. Lighter oils disperse faster than heavier ones. When oil does break down, it mixes with water, along with other particles such as sand, to form tar balls. These tar balls tend to scatter across a wide area and are not significantly harmful to the environment. So if we do not clean up oil spills, nature has its own course of action for their cleanup, but it will take a lot of time. In order to clean the oil spills faster and to save aquatic life, various methods are employed. There are several methods and tools that can be employed for oil removal. Floating devices. Many types of floating devices are used to clean up the oil floating on the water, like floating booms, skimming, and sorbents. Oil booms are the most effective initial response tool for dealing with oil spills in water. Oil has a lower density than water, so when it spills into water, it floats on the surface. It's crucial to quickly localize spilled oil to prevent it from spreading further, carried by water currents or ocean waves. The longer the response time to localize the oil spill, the larger the spill area will become. Once the oil is localized, various equipment can be used to remove the spill. This could be oil skimmers, oil vacuums, or oil absorbents, used until the water's surface is clean. If a thin oil residue remains, appearing rainbow-colored, it can be dispersed using oil spill dispersants. Made from waterproof PVC material, these are usually orange or yellow and contain foam so they can float on the water's surface. This type of oil boom is typically found in two shapes, cylindrical and rectangular. This product only localizes the oil spill. It does not absorb the oil. It's highly effective for localizing oil spills in the ocean because it can quickly be deployed over tens of meters. Because its function is solely to localize the oil spill, one advantage of this product is that it can be used repeatedly for any oil spills. An oil skimmer is a device designed to remove oil from the surface of the water. They are often used in response to oil spills to limit environmental damage. Oil skimmers work by utilizing the specific gravity difference between oil and water, as oil is usually lighter than water and will float on top of it. There are several types of oil skimmers, each designed for specific conditions. The three main types are absorbing skimmers, belt skimmers, and drum skimmers. In a scenario of an oil spill at sea from a sunken ship, oil skimmers are usually deployed from a vessel or platform operating near the spill location. The skimmer is positioned in the area where the oil concentration is highest and then operated to collect oil from the water's surface. 
The oil collected by the skimmer is then transferred to a storage tank on the vessel or platform for subsequent processing or disposal in a safe and responsible manner. And this is the Lemoore Built-in Oil Recovery System, or LORS 5C-L. The Lemoore Inbuilt Oil Recovery System, or LORS 5C-L, is a skimming system installed on large ships. This system can quickly and efficiently capture spilled oil on the water surface. This system works like this. Deploy the system first on the leeward side of the vessel, then turn the vessel and deploy the other side. Turn on the hydraulic system and the radio control system. Connect air hose, lift up the jib arm and move it outside the railing, then connect the bowline. Next, open the deck hatches above brush compartment and sweep boom winder. Open the bottom valves to let water in the brush compartment. Open the side door and at the same time, run sweep boom winder in so it opens the brake on the winder. Connect the end of the jib arm to the float. Run out the first two meters of boom by running the sweep boom winder slowly out and turn jib out. Then open the air valve to inflate the sweep boom and turn the jib vertical movement into floating position. Extend the telescope and move out the jib and sweep boom until the jib arm is a little more than 90 degrees out. Tighten the bowline, release the jib arm horizontal movement, and close the air valve. Start the flow impeller and the brush. When both sides are deployed, the vessel is ready to collect oil. This type of boom is designed to both localize and absorb oil spills simultaneously. The advantage of this type of boom is that it only absorbs oil without absorbing water, so when it is placed on the water's surface, it will not sink. Even when it is saturated with oil, this device continues to float on the water surface. However, it is not recommended to be reused after it is saturated with oil. If another oil spill occurs, it is advisable to use a new oil absorbent boom. Oil absorbent booms are usually 12.5 centimeters or 20 centimeters in diameter and three meters in length. Each boom has a connector so that these oil absorbent booms can be linked together to form a sufficiently long barrier. Eon Chemicals carries both sizes of oil absorbent booms. Since both types of products float on water, it can be a good choice to use both simultaneously to localize oil spills. They can also be complemented with oil absorbent products like oil absorbent pads, pillows, and rolls. There are other methods used to clean up oil spills, such as hot tapping. Hot tapping is a technique that uses a special device capable of drilling a hole into the hull of the ship and installing a valve to extract the oil. The Miko Mosquito is an example of such a hot tapping tool. The Mosquito is a remotely operated machine that can dive up to 3,000 meters to remove the oil before it leaks into the water. The Mosquito is placed on the shipwreck site with a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, and is attached to the ship's hull using strong electromagnets. The Mosquito then drills a hole in the tank, creates a seal, and inserts a valve and hose connection. This process is followed by the lowering of an electric pump system to the wreck, which then pumps the oil into a recovery tank on the surface vessel. The entire process is operated and monitored from a laptop. Once in position outside a wreck's oil tank, the Mosquito's three powerful electromagnet feet are planted against the steel hull to hold it in place. Then, a Miko technician on the surface activates a four-inch diameter electrically powered hull saw. With the operation monitored via a video link, the Mosquito's drill pierces the steel tank walls, which can be up to one inch thick. The cut disc is then pushed inside and is immediately followed into the tank by a patented spring latch coupling. This coupling automatically connects and locks a hose to the tank, thereby preventing any of its contents from escaping. Once the extraction hose is securely in position, a subsea pump can recover the oil at a rate of up to 50 cubic meters per hour. If the tank's contents are too viscous to pump efficiently, the Mosquito could have drilled another connection for injecting steam generated by Bunker 1. This would have liquefied the thickened oil for pumping, although this procedure was not found to be necessary. Lastly, when a higher rate of extraction is needed, the compact size of the Mosquito allows for multiple units to be used close together. 
These units can also be easily relocated without the need for them to be returned to the surface. This technique uses water or gas to flush the oil from inside the ship to the surface. It is typically used for lighter and volatile oil, such as Gulfax crude. The technique requires calm sea conditions and oil catching equipment on the surface. This method eliminates oil spills in the sea by igniting it directly at the site. The procedure requires oil concentration and an ignition source, and can be effective in ideal conditions. The decision to burn oil at sea involves many considerations, such as impacts on human health and potential effects on the environment, such as Arctic ice melting. Once ignited, the oil needs to reach a high temperature to continue burning. The residual residue can be difficult to recover, potentially sinking, and impacting bottom-dwelling marine species or fishing gear. That wraps up today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos. Catch you in the next one.